Market crashes, plummeting stocks, metaphors abound in the finance world. Here to share insight on how they shape public discussion around business trends, former labor speechwriter Simon Lancaster. Jumping, leaping, sparring. Tell me, why so much suspense in the finance world? It's great that we've got this opportunity to talk about it because metaphors, which is what all of those examples are that you were talking about there, are something that very few people will ever have a conversation about, but we use them all the time. We use metaphor on average once every 16 words. And so our conversation is littered with metaphors or scattered with metaphors or metaphors load what we say. You know, we use them in the war of words. They're all over the place and they're really, really important in business and in financial discussion because all of those examples that you were talking about there, like shares leaping or jumping or crashing, they all plant powerful images in people's minds. And the images that are planted in people's mind then shape their attitudes, their approaches, and ultimately their behaviours. So there's been fascinating research which has shown how the kind of metaphor that you use to talk about a share can determine whether or not people think that share price is going to go up or whether it's going to go down. The Wolf of Wall Street, one of the yeah. best predatory metaphors around. Tell me, does it still have its peel. Jordan Belfont, is that the guy? When he does that wonderful speech in there, he says, your, your phones, they're M16s on your desk, and I want you to be calling up your customers, and I want you to be shooting them down, and I want them to buy or die. You know, and I paraphrase a bit there because some of the language was a bit fruitier than you might allow on um, your channel. But he's using this metaphor. And this metaphor, it may feel like it's far too violent, the wolf of Wall Street. But in actual fact, you speak to people in the city, they do speak in this kind of language. So there's a lot of animal imagery. Of course, bear and bull markets we get all over the place. But also people will say stuff like, you know, there's blood on the streets. You eat what you kill. And this is standard financial services, financial investment uh, talk. We're in the midst of a sea change, no? Because in the wake of the 2008 crisis, it's a public calling for nothing else but a change in terms of, you know, this distance that exists between the public and the finance world. What do metaphors do to sort of bridge that gap, if only to create this survivalist instinct to kick in? Yeah, well, I think, and this is the argument that I make in the book, you want to be pursuing really natural metaphors, natural metaphors that people can easily relate to and which show that financial systems are on their side. And so let me give you some examples, okay? Do you talk about companies as if they're machines? So, you know, we're driving change, accelerating reform, having a gear change, all of that. Or do you talk about companies as if they're people? The heart of our company, our values, our outlook, our attitudes. The latter is going to make people feel warmer towards banks if they speak about themselves as if they're people. And many banks do. The bank that likes to say yes. You know, there's a lot of personification. In this new phase of your life, you're of course advising CEOs and other executives on their own languaging and speeches and other public presentations. Tell me, what are they calling for? I left politics about eight years ago and have been working with some of the, the best CEOs in the world. And they naturally use this kind of imagery anyway people have this idea of a speechwriter as being a bit like um, a puppeteer I wish <laughs> you know it's not really like that the job of the speechwriter rather than writing the speech that we would like them to deliver rather more it's writing the speech that they'd have written themselves so you actually try to capture some of their natural language because otherwise they don't look authentic so one of the ways I do that is analyzing the metaphors that they use which gives you fascinating insights not just into their views on the world but also some of their deep values and attitudes towards things leave me with one final thought if you were to advise someone who really has a tense relationship with the public. How can they win their support at the end of the day through something as simple as, as the language that they use? I would say there's, you know, how do you look at people out there in the audience? Many people will look at people in an audience and their caveman brain will go up and they'll think of them there with clubs running at them. Don't think of them like this. Think of them instead as people who are looking to you as a leader and begging you to make them feel valued, make them feel worthwhile, show that you care about them, show you understand them, give them a purpose, give them a reason to be in the room, and then they will give you all of the supports that you want. That would be my advice to leaders.